Hello everybody, welcome to the Basement Basement Voice Podcast. Once again, I am Chris Gray over here, maybe over there. I don't I, I, I never really know. Um but we got I'm Devin somewhere. Nickel. Yo, what to do, people? Um just jump right into it. As always, football is finally about to be back. Thank God for that. I needed football in my life. You, me, and a whole mess of people. Oh, everybody needed it. Everybody needed it. Um, and we're getting it back. So we are going to start today's episode with just kind of giving you how we think everything's going to shake out. Give our divisional picks. So. Where you want to start? You want to do AFC or NFC first? Ooh. I was going to make you decide, so I didn't have to pick, but you picked <laughs> the punch. You son of a bitch. That's what I do sometimes. Uh, let's start with AFC, just so I can get my pain out of the way. Um, okay. So, speaking of my pain, let's just start off with the AFC East. Why don't you start us off, Dev? How do you feel? Yeah. I personally think... I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. I think they're going to be able to win the AFC East. Patriots are going to be right there because it's the Patriots. They, you know, let's be real. They signed Cam Newton. He's a great quarterback. And only getting him for a million dollars and some change, like, that's a, that's what we call a steal in the business. But it just looks like I'm not sure about that defense. They lost a lot of their key starters couple went to Miami, couple left free agency. I'm just not sure if the receivers can't stay healthy, like that defense will be able to keep them in the games. So I'm saying the Buffalo Bills will be able to win that division. Um, Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say I'd have to agree with you on that one. Um, the Bills have set themselves up. The defense looks great. The only real big question mark for me is Josh Allen, but he has shown a quite a few like um, spurts of what you want him to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not as sold as on the Patriots being right there though. Um, Cam Newton in a new system that he has described as like calculus, I think was the word he used. Mm-hmm. So just a very confusing system. Not not that I don't think he can't get into that system. He's a very good and capable quarterback. But just first-year quarterbacks on a new team always seem to struggle, especially when learning the system, depending on who it is and what type of system they're coming from and moving to. And... I mean, they really haven't changed the fact that they have no one to throw the ball to. Yep. That's why Tom Brady left. Um, and then plus, half their defense opted out. So none of that is really looking good for them. I, I expect them to take a bit of a step back this year, maybe have a little bit of a rebuilding year. Um, and there's also that conspiracy theory that um, this all the defensive players opting out. It's just to save them. And they're basically tanking this year to get Trevor Lawrence, which wouldn't surprise me from Bill Belichick because fuck Bill Belichick. But. I won it, but hey, you got to compete with Jacksonville Jaguars on that front, and they're doing a great job at that. Yeah, just sell everybody. <laughs> um, I at least at the very... So I think the Bills take it. Um... I do not I really do not think the Jets bottom out this year. I really don't. I mean, we lost Jamal Adams obviously. I've I've been through my feelings on that. And CJ Mosley opted out, which is big. That's big mm-hmm. for the defense. But I find the Jets 
wide receiver situation very interesting because mm-hmm. they ha- they are stacked with two receivers. Yep. They don't have a one per se, but they have a bunch of very capable two receivers. So I feel like if they're switching the targets, if they're really spreading the ball around, it could be a decent play for them. I'm not saying it's the way to go for the future, but I'm just saying for this season, I've seen I've seen things like this work because it's not like they don't have a one, two, and three. They have all twos. Right. Like Rashad Perryman, a two, in my opinion. Uh, Jameson Crowder, great two in the slot. And um, just on Chris Hogan, Denzel Mims is a little bit of a um, he's a little up in the air. Like they don't, you don't really know what you're going to get with him yet. But a lot of people are saying he could be the best wide receiver in the draft. So I think they have options there. I do expect Sam to take a bigger step forward this year. Just finally having more than one year in a system. That's going to help a lot. A lot. And then um, obviously still having Lev Bell in the backfield, even though there's speculation he might be traded away. By the trade deadline, and um, but he's a great pass catching back, and with their little bit of a revamped line, I think that'll help Lev as well as um, Sam. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I I'm not expecting them to win the AFC East. I just don't think they bought him out. Um, Dolphins, I don't know what the Dolphins are doing. If I had to if I had to make a guess, I'm saying they're probably bottom of the division. Yo, I mean, if they keep Fitzpatrick at quarterback, he won't let them be bottom of this division because that man does not know how to take a step back. He's giving you everything he can. And even, until, like, sorry, what? Even when you don't need everything he can. Even when exactly. the better play is for him to step off the gas a little bit. He's fucking gutted it in there. Trying to fucking force it into double coverage. That's why you oh, love yeah. the guy and that's part of his problem. Oh. Listen, you could be down by like 21 points with like two seconds left. No chance in hell. He's going to call some crazy ass play. And he don't matter if you win double coverage like you said in the end zone. And you have no business being thrown to. He's going to try to get that ball to you. And if he throws an interception, he might even make the tackle himself. Yeah. Even, even when he's on a team I don't like, I can't help but love Ryan Fitzpatrick. Like, I just can't. But yeah, for that division, if I had to make a guess, and this is probably the only one I'm going to rank in this type of order because it's my division, I'd say Bills. I honestly think the Patriots and Jets fight for that two spot. Um... Like I'm not saying it's I'm not saying they're both gonna be ten and six, but eight and eight, seven and nine, somewhere around there. I could definitely mm-hmm. see them both going in that way, as long as the Patriots tank isn't in full effect. But I think choosing Cam Newton as the starter might mean that's not going to happen. I feel like they'd go with Stidham in that case. Um and then yeah, I think the Dolphins bottom it up. Moving on. Moving on. We head to the AFC West. Um, and oh, this this yeah. is a no brainer. Um, all right, I'm gonna say it. Yo, I don't think they're ready for this hot take. All right, I know I'm gonna get killed on the internet for this, but I think. The Kansas City Chiefs win the AFC West. I know. I'm fucking crazy. This guy. This guy over here. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. Yeah, the fucking half-billion-dollar quarterback. Somehow able to resign everybody. Like Everybody. I I have no idea how the Chiefs did all that. Um, And they have themselves set for the next three or four years. Like, they might be the new dynasty 
Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we say that before, and then things happen that are just crazy, but looking at it right now, like, if things keep on the same track, there's just no way. There's no way. I gotta um, agree with you on that one. Like like we said, resign, you know, Kelsey, Tyreek, paid Patty Mahomes like half a billion dollars. On top of that, you potentially got what many experts are saying the best draft, I mean, best court running back to come out of that draft on a rookie deal right now. So you're only paying him maybe two to four million for the next four years. Like, that is a great job by their financial department, whoever handles the finances over there, and locking up that team for the next couple of years. Yeah, that, that team is going to be a problem for, at the very least, the next three, four years, if not more. Yeah. Because they all seem to have kind of the Brady-esque mindset of, I'll take a little less because I'll make it back in all the endorsements when I win 12 mm-hmm. Super Bowls. Right. Um, when you're walking around with uh, enough rings to cover each finger and a couple of your toes, <laughs> you're doing all right. You'll find money some other place, I promise you. <laughs> All right, so let's keep it moving. Back to the AFC North. I know another huge hot take, but you got to take last year's MVP in the Baltimore Ravens. I like I. I feel like both these teams just get better, and they were already yep. fucking ridiculous to begin with. Um, I agree. I agree with that one. I mean, the Ravens, their defense got that much better with having... um, I'm going to butcher his name, so forgive me, but you got... got The disgruntled defensive lineman from Jacksonville. Yep. yep. Ngakwe is his last name, I believe. Forgive me if I butcher that. Ngakwe or something like that? Yeah. Like terrible with these types of names. I'm just terrible with pronouncing things. Hey, I'm right there with you. But that defense was already pretty good. And it just solidified their defensive line. You know they're going to be able to just wreak habit on the quarterbacks. And then other teams' defenses, like, how do you contain Lamar Jackson? Like, yeah, you keep him in the pocket, but he will make the right call and pass it off to whoever is open, find the open man, or give it to Mark Ingram or J.K. Dobbins. I mean, he said it himself. After scoring four touchdowns in his opening game or something like that, fucking not bad for a running back. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the greatest line to come out of that season, of last season. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've... I've been saying it since that draft. Everyone was so down on him. I wanted Sam Darnold or Lamar Jackson. And, I mean, I got Sam. And I love Sam. But people were sleeping on him. But they ain't sleeping on him no more. Nope. He is definitely not a running back. So, fuck all you racists just because he's black. Um, which is what happens every year. And I hate it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Raven's going to win that. I mean, mm-hmm. they got the Bengals. The Browns should be a fucking superhero team, but they can't get it together. They could make a... I mean, they still have all the talent. So with this new coaching change, they can... Like, it could change some things. I'm just... Kareem Hunt, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, like... Nick it, Chubb. Yeah, like... How did I say Nick Chubb before Kareem Hunt? I don't even know. Because Kareem Hunt just got paid true um but yeah no, that so team they're should always be a lot better and the Steelers kind of depend I mean, on Ben yeah they got I mean their defense is solid yeah let's let's be real like they have last season they had no business finishing eight and eight but that defense kept them in so many games whether it was the turnovers or scoring off turnovers and if Big Ben can stay healthy, that's that's really good for the Steelers. Like they need him to be healthy. You got James James Crowd, no, James Connor. I'm sorry, 
Sony say, backfield. Crowder's my guy, my guy. My <laughs> fault. My fault. You know, um, Connor, if he's healthy and can stay healthy for the whole season, big plus for them. He's a physical runner that's not afraid to get down and dirty and, like, try to run people over. And if Juju needs Big Ben, like, they, they're in good shape right now. I'm actually really surprised that James Conner was almost the one person I expected to opt out this year. Mm -hmm. Just because I know he is completely cured of his cancer and love to hear it. Like, I love James Conner. It's a great story. But, like, things like chemo and things like that, that really messes with your immune system. And it can have long-reaching effects. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So I I really thought he was going to opt out out of anyone. But like again, I'm not here to tell a man what to do. Like if he feels safe doing it, more power to him. Oh yeah. It's probably dead. But yeah. Yeah, so we'll just But the thing that really like knocks the Steelers out for me where I really don't think they have a chance is I don't think Juju's a one. I think he's the best two you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. But he needs someone to take some eyes off him. Yeah. And I think that was shown last season when Big Ben goes down, Connor's hurt, and now all eyes are on Juju. Because let's be real, between Mason Rudolph and Doug Hodges, defense were not worried about that. Well, my fault. Miles Garrett was worried about Doug Hodges, but that's another story for another time. But, yeah, like, the defense is just not... They'll take into consideration, you know, a backup quarterback, but their main concern is, like, all right, we got the backup. You might be the backup for a reason, so let's take away your primary threat. And that was Juju. And, yeah, without a true number one, to someone at least help take eyes off Juju, like, he's going to struggle a little. So, yeah, I'm definitely... I definitely am going to take the Ravens there. Um, oh. And then moving on to the AFC South. Mm-hmm. This one this one's a little harder for me. Um, this this could be a pretty competitive division. Uh, I'm not sure how sold I am on Tannehill. Um Colts just picked up Philip Rivers. So, I mean, I'd say that's an upgrade over Jacoby Brissett, but he is getting older, so we don't... He's a little bit of a question mark to me, too. Um, If I had to pick, I'd probably go Texans, honestly. Um, probably closely followed by the Colts and the Titans. The only team I, I obviously the Jaguars because they're just selling everybody, but Mm -hmm. like you, I probably have to go Texans like you. I agree. It's a three team race in that division. Jacksonville has unofficially officially taken themselves out of that running. But where I differ is I think Tennessee is going to be able to win that division. It's going to be a hard fought division. Like it's going to be within one or two games of all the three of those teams. But I think Tennessee with re-signing Derrick Henry, you know, so he's paid now. You got uh, A.J. Brown ready to make the come up and like have a breakout season again, which I, I mean he broke out last season. And that defense is solid. Don't forget, they got Jadavian Clowney. So they did. They did. That's another that, big thing I did not take into consideration. I'm just that a little defense wo- was already good. I'm a little worried about Derrick Henry, though, because. Usually when someone has like a breakout, like Derrick Henry's been good, but Derrick Henry last season was next level. 
Yeah. When someone breaks out like that, they almost always take a little bit of a step back as teams start to figure out what they're doing and, like, really clue in on that person more than mm-hmm. they already have been. So I do expect him to take a little bit of a step back. Not too big of a step back. And he better not, because I fucking, he was my, I drafted him seventh overall. Um, <laughs> but we'll get but, to that. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, well, the thing that scares me about Houston is that they traded away DeAndre Hopkins. Right. So now you're looking at Will Fuller, Brendan Cooks being your top two receivers. Both great players. Both can like, ball out, but Will Fuller has the worst luck at staying healthy, and that is what concerns me. I feel like people are sleeping on Brandon Cooks, though. He had an offseason last year. He was he was running through some injuries, but he went four seasons in a row over 1,000 yards before mm-hmm. that. He's he's jumped around a lot. That's, I feel like that's another reason people kind of sleep on him. But every time he's been moved, it's always been for like a first-round pick. Like He's got the talent. It's just that I don't know why teams are so fast to be like, you know what? We like you. You're a great player, but we're going to trade you for like a first and a two and something else. I think it's more because all the teams he was on had other ones and they couldn't pay him both. And they just kind of picked who they felt they should run with. And it just wasn't Cooks. Um, I think he just kind of hit a string of bad luck with that. Mm hmm. But I, I really think Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, especially if they can both stay healthy, um, which I know Cooks is dealing with a little something right now. I'm not 100% sure on Fuller. I think um, Fuller's healthy. But yeah, as of I know, now. I know Cooks is dealing with a little something, so that could hurt them um, a little bit. But... Um, I, I just think people are finally done sleeping on Deshaun Watson. I feel like J.J. Watt is always a threat on defense. Always. Even when he's hurt, he's still a threat. Um, and yeah, I, I would say I feel more confident in the Texans mm-hmm. as, a, as a team than I do against any other of the choices. Mm-hmm. So, when I say I pick Houston, I'm not, that's not what I'm d- pulling down on. That's not the hill I'm dying on. Let's put it that right. way. Right. I got you. All right. So, that was your American Football Conference. Um, you can see our picks right here. I don't know. There's somewhere on my side. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we will move on to the National Football Conference. I'll let you start it up, Dev. These are your boys. Rank them one to four. Ugh. Well, I mean, some of them are my boys. We're going to start in the NFC East. And obviously, my beloved New York Giants are not going to win this conference not going to win the division like let's be real people it's not happening um we're both just taking l's today (laughs) yeah (laughs) but it's okay as big sean says last night took a nail but tonight i bounced back so i'm gonna (laughs) think that uh i think washington finishes last in that division they got a little better but, but they're dealing with so much shit right now. Like that so locker room much. has to be a fucking mess. I mean, you lose potentially your starting running back in Darius guys to being a horrible person. Trash. So you get him out of there. Then you trade away the veteran leadership of Adrian Peterson. Love the dude, but he's not gonna be the focal point of that team. So you're yeah, like you're training away the veteran the veteran back, and that's, like, I get you want that veteran presence, but at the same time, as much as I respect everything Adrian Peterson's done in this league, like, what is he going to give you now? He's he's too old. He's too beat up. Just the style of play he plays mm-hmm. is not conducive to where he is at the moment. 
He's right. that very aggressive, very just pound the football type of guy. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. He has fucking moves. He can make people miss with the best of them. But he's he's that guy who wants to fucking smash your teeth and blow through you. Mm-hmm. And when that's fine when you're young. But just playing that style throughout the years and the fact that he is just older now. I don't think it's. I don't think he can sustain that, even yeah. if he does have flashes of brilliance. I mean, he might get a couple goal line touchdowns here and there in Detroit, but it's not like the Adrian Peterson of the Minnesota days is walking through that locker room and will put up, you know, 100 plus yards, two TDs, and like throw down to like a mean block to protect a quarterback. And why are all like the nastiest fucking guys in the football field? Some of the like the nicest fucking guys in the world. Like every time you see his photo come up when they're like announcing their lineups, he just has this nice smile. He looks like he's just gonna ask you how your day was. Maybe give you a little pat on the head. <laughs> like <laughs> same with yeah. like same with like fucking Troy Palombalu, the nicest guy you've ever met. Guy talks <laughs> to God apparently. <laughs> but will break your fucking teeth. <laughs> like Yo, they just have a legit switch where they know the minute you put that helmet on, I'm gonna I don't murder care who you are. I'm going to destroy you. But the minute we take the helmet off, yo, man, great game, man. Yo, you did really good. What, yo, can I give you a little piece of advice? Next time when I go here, cut here and stuff. You won't catch me. Yo, I got God in my ear right now. You want to you wanna, <laughs> you wanna know what he's saying? <laughs> No, Troy, right. that's not God. That's your defensive coordinator. God. <laughs> that might very well be the same person. God might be a big fan of defenses. Not 100% sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so, Washington's on the bottom. Who you got yep. next? Number three, my New York Giants. They're going to do a little better, but they're not ready to contend with the big boys of Philly and Dallas. Like, they're just, they're not there yet. I mean, Saquon's going to stay healthy? Yes, hopefully. Danny Dimes, going to take another step forward. This is now his team. Don't have to worry about Eli. Yo, you guys, y'all motherfuckers switched on Eli so quick. So quick. When they took him out, you were just like, yo, this is disrespectful. Like, I can't I mean, believe they would do this shit. And now everyone's just like, yeah, fuck Eli. He gone now. Danny Dimes all day. <laughs> fuck Eli. He can't throw a pass for shit. Like... Y'all, y'all are messed up for that. Like I, every what, giant fan I know. We are a messed up fan base, and I will say the way they did Eli was fucking dirty. But that's another story for another time. Oh, sadness. But yeah, that um receiving core, it's good, but it's not great. Yeah. Like we got Sterling Shepard, good. Golden Tate. Good. Terry Slayton. Good with a lot of upside, I feel like. We don't know too much about him. I think I think that's that's the guy that's gonna tell whether your wide receiver core is good. I don't think Shepard and Tate at this point in their careers are or at least in this point in Tate's career, is are the showstoppers right. like that he once was. And Shepard is a little hit or miss for me. Like, he's really got to, I feel like he's really got to show him something this year. If Shepard is kind of like Juju in the sense that he's a number two, he's not the best number two out there. Let's be real, that's Juju. But if there's a number one, like when we had Odell, Shepard was when great. He went off. Yeah. Because, you know, defenses were. Focusing on Odell, which let Shepard just get open, do his thing, and that's where he's flashing, dazzling, and all that great stuff. Giants probably next year should maybe get a number one receiver, but whatever, whatever. I'm thinking future tenses. No, no, my fault. Defense next season. That's what we need. Also, yeah, that's right. We don't have a defense because half of them getting cut, getting injured, or getting arrested. 
DeAndre <laughs> Baker. Uh, y'all had two players get arrested this year in the offseason. That's fucking crazy to me. <laughs> they had... This is the offseason where they told you to stay your ass at home because you and can't go anywhere. Did. And, <laughs> and yet they somehow did. managed to get arrested. Like... Uh, uh, that's stupid. fucking great. Anywho, back to business. Um, number two in division, I think it's going to be the Eagles. I think Philly's going to take the second spot. They're already starting a little banged up with their receivers. I think um, Alshon's out for the first week. I think Jalen Rieger is set to make his debut either week two or week three. I mean, you could have Zach Ertz, but they seem to be favoring Dallas Goddard, Goddard more. But who knows? Maybe they run like a two tight end set. So, yeah, I, there's that. I, I don't think they're ever going to like actually pivot away from Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz no. is just too good. Yeah, I like think his his 2018 season was phenomenal. And his 2019 season, he was banged up a little bit, but like he still had a good season. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like I feel like people forgot about him with the whole um, like Travis Kelsey and George Kittle and those guys coming up that people kind of just forgot that Zach Ertz was the guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't sleep on Ertz. And yeah, me, I, I won't sleep on him either. Like you said, 2019, a little disappointing, but only when you compare it to like. 2018 and 2017 because right. before then he was definitely top three tight end in the league and unfortunately that means the number one spot and the winning the team that wins the division I think it's going to be the Dallas Cowboys Dak scares me because that boy is still looking to get paid Jerry Jones is not ready to make that commitment yet at least to him but they got Ezekiel Elliott locked up. Amari Cooper locked up. Michael Gallup on a rookie deal. And C.D. Lamb on a super rookie deal. I don't know what a super rookie deal is. I'm kind of making that up off the top of my dome. But those the three are... Rookie deal. He's cheap. Yeah. Like, this is the time. And their defense is pretty damn good, if I remember correctly. Stacked. You got a new head coach in Mike McCarthy... We saw what he could do with um, Aaron Rodgers and his prime when uh, they were in Green Bay. So I expect Dak to ball out and have a great year, and the Cowboys are going to take that division. I think this is Dak's last year as a Cowboy, to be honest. Because Jerry Joe said it himself, my hand does not cramp up from writing checks. I can promise you that. Um, and he still ain't signed no check. So I I really I don't know how. I, I like I. I'm really, over the past few weeks, I'm starting to feel like this is Dak's last year as a cowboy. Where he goes, so. that's another. Where he goes, that's another story. But yeah, I I'd say I agree top to bottom on that division. Um, cowboys are just way too talented and super underperformed last year. Um. Eagles have solid talent, but just haven't been able to pull it together. And Carson Wentz just can't stay fucking healthy. Mm -hmm. Giants are still a little bit ways away. And Nate Solder being out of the lineup, um, I think, is a big hit for them. He hasn't played super well. I mean, with the rest of that line, there's only so much he could do. But just having the veteran... Um, the veteran in there at left tackle to help out Andrew Thomas, I think would have been big. And now having Andrew Thomas start his left tackle on his first year, I think he's going to struggle a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was having this conversation with one of my friends the other day. I think Andrew Thomas is going to struggle a lot more than like Mackay Beck did just, and not even because of like a talent level it's just Makai Becton so big while having movement you know what I mean that he just needs to kind of put himself there 
And whether or not he does anything right, it's still going to slow people down. Right. Where I don't think Andrew Thomas has that. So I, I, I feel like first-year linemen always seem to struggle a little bit in the league. So that's what worries me about them. But I still I still have them over Washington. And I do not think this is going to be a good year for Washington. Um, yeah, and unless the GOAT, Alex Smith, takes over. Yeah, if he does, that's fucking amazing. Mike, run it. No, no, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. All right, so, so. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, let's go, let's go to the <laughs> NFC West. Um, This one's basically a two-team race for me. Yep. Um, Seahawks and 49ers, and I think the Seahawks take it. I think they put themselves in prime position. They just added my boy Jamal Adams, which gives them some extra strength in the secondary and a great run-stopping ability. Um, and Jimmy J is still a question for me. He did not play well down the stretch. I mean, he got them to the Super Bowl, and that's all you can do, um, except for maybe win the Super Bowl. But I don't know. Just I feel like it's Russ's time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going Seahawks for the NFC West. I agree with you on that one. Like you said, they did just add Jamal Adams and re up that defense. And we all know that the key to Seattle when they won their Super Bowl was their defense and the Legion of Boom. So going out getting the best safety in the league right now is was this perfect thing for them to do. And then with the Niners they're good team, great team, but their receivers cannot stay healthy, which I feel like is a big problem. I mean, yeah, you got Greg Kittle, George Kittle. Yeah, George Kittle. I'm sorry. I apologize. And what are we doing? a lot of stuff. And he'll catch the ball for you. He'll run people down. He'll celebrate, you know, have a little good old fun time, but he's going to need help. I think they're already starting like week one several question marks in the receiver department Debo Samuel who's supposed to be their number one I don't believe he's starting this week I think he's out maybe another week or two um and then all offseason they were bringing in receivers just to get bodies in there and it seemed like all of them were like catching injuries or getting away for cut Yeah, um, I don't really see the Rams um, doing much. Golf did not look great last year. That whole just that whole team really did not look the best that year. Um, and the Cardinals are still building. I feel um, I feel like they could be a problem down the road, especially mm-hmm. with Kyler Murray. But I think we're still kind of waiting to get there. Yep. So I'm definitely going Seahawks. Uh, moving on to the NFC North. I'm going to let you lead this one off, Dev, because I am. This one has got me a little bit at a loss. Yeah. So the NFC North, this one gave me a little bit of trouble. I personally think the Minnesota Vikings are going to take it. Kirk Cousins is back. Doesn't really have to. I feel like primetime Kirk is not going to be a thing because there's. No, gonna be, there's no fans in the stand, stands, so I don't know if that messed with his psyche or whatever. But I feel like he wanted to worry about that. You but have, either way, he'd be, he'd been showing up in prime time in his last couple. Like he started to a little bit at the very right. Least. You got but, Dalvin, um, sorry, no go go go. I was gonna say you still have Dalvin Cook in the backfield. He's looking for a big contract, so he's going to ball out. And even the last two seasons one healthy he balls out and we all know that minnesota is going to run their defense i mean their offense through him offense and receivers you got adam thielen he's still there he's going to fight hard for every yard he can possibly get you traded away stefan Diggs. yeah i know it's a big problem but guess what you drafted justin jefferson i believe in the first round to eventually take on the Stefan Diggs row. 
I think Minnesota set themselves up for a good season, and their defense is solid. Yeah. Um, that's who I was leaning to. Um, I can see the Packers making a run at it as well. The Bears just announced fucking Trubisky as their starter, so that does not does not bode well for me. I do not. I I've honestly lost all faith in faith in Trubisky at this point. You know what sucks? Um, what for the Bears? They paid Nick Foles like twenty one million dollars and sent a fourth round or a second round pick to Jacksonville. For Nick Foles, when you could have gotten someone hell a lot cheaper. Yeah, this is one of the most quarterback deep off seasons I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And everyone is moving. So yeah. a lot of times when you get like a lot of quarterbacks coming up, they all just resign. And like you have people a few months up speculating, oh, this team might leave, this team might like this guy might leave, but they don't. Everyone yeah. left this year. Everyone said, Hey, you know, thanks for everything, but I'm gonna keep it moving. Um, but yeah, if I, I probably go Vikings too. But the Packers could shine through, especially Aaron Rodgers with the chip on his shoulder. Oh, Even yeah. though he seems he seems to like Jordan Love, though all the videos I've seen, he's like big brother in him, like just messing with him, just being. He could, but he also might secretly be like. You're not getting my fucking job. I mean, I don't think he blames the guy for what the team did. Oh, no, but he might look at it like, you're not getting my job. Like, I'm going to make it hard for them to get rid of me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying with the chip on his shoulder. But I'm saying, like, he does. I don't think he wants to do to Jordan what Favre did to him. Yeah. So, because I think he understands, like, because he was in that situation himself that, that he just like you don't control where you get drafted mm-hmm. like this guy's just happy to be in the NFL and it's sorry it has to be possibly at the expense of you Aaron but you know that is what that is right but yeah I definitely if I'd probably pick the Vikings Thielen's just another fucking animal Delvin Cook is just another fucking animal mm-hmm. um, Kurt when he's on makes great plays and that defense is solid so I'd probably go that too finishing it off with the NFC South um yeah how do you not pick the Bucks? I feel like every other week like something pops up on my alerts saying oh the Buccaneers just signed this other fucking amazing player out of fucking nowhere because they're all taking six dollars for the year to play with Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got fucking the best receiving core in the league. If I oh yeah, um, plus Gronk. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they just picked up Leonard Fournette. Holy shit! Yeah, this is. You gotta remember, Leonard Fournette had a bad season last year, but it wasn't too long ago that he was touted as the Michael Jordan of the NFL. I'm not gonna lie, this division gave me gave me some trouble. I like went back and forth, back and forth, but I agree, it's gonna be Tampa Bay. Like you said, you got Nico and Tom Brady behind center, behind AQ Shipley. And that receiving core already stacked between Mike Evans and um, Chris Godwin. I think they each put up like a thousand yards last year. It's like you take one away, the other is going off. You take the other, then the first one's going off. Like, what do you do as a defense? You know, you legit gotta call up Troy Palmalu, ask him if God's got a minute to like help him out real quick, and that might be the only way you could stop that those two. Gronk, yo, everyone's going to give him the respect he deserves. And a year off, granted, he was the 24-7 champion for WWE for a little bit at that time. But I feel like that year off might do him, gave his body, like, more time to heal. More time. Um, the honest, Honestly, the only team I can see competing with the Bucks in this division is probably the Saints. Um, Panthers still figuring things out at the moment um and falcons 
I just feel like haven't been the same since they lost that Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I feel like Matty Ice is not Matty Ice anymore ever since that Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, It's a damn shame because, like, on paper, the Falcons should be way better than what they are. But I know. But it is what it is. Yep. So yeah, um, and this is the last, the Saints' last real shot. So, and I think they have a chip on their shoulder because they kind of got screwed out of the last two years. Yeah, Super Bowl appearances in the last two years. Um, and like, not even just like, oh, little things like, oh, I didn't think that was a good call. I didn't think everyone knows these calls Brilliant. were absolutely terrible. Yeah, even... they tried to change the rules because of one, but just fucking as. One of the podcasts we watch, Pat McAfee, was saying, fucking Alberto River on. <laughs> Yo, even Ray Charles could see that there was a brilliant pass interference call. But not Alberto River on. Fucking Alberto <laughs> You can see our NFC selections right about here. Sorry, I always wanted to do that. Just go like this and then graphic pops up. So right. <laughs> did that today. <laughs> and here I am. Face 